Good morning and welcome to worship at Bread of Life, Deaf Lutheran Church. I am Michelle Lewis. I'm the pastor at Bread of Life. Hello, my name is Deacon Dorothy Sparks. And I'm David Evans, I'm the interpreter. My friends want to remind you that God gathers us. It is not an accident that you are here today in worship with us. God gathers us. God is involved in our being together. And so as we are gathered together, we take time to light a candle, to be reminded we are not alone. We are all gathered in the light of Christ. So as I light the candle here, I invite you all to gather a candle and light a candle in your home. And I invite you to take a couple of moments to focus on the candle flame. Take some deep breaths, calming breaths, and let your body relax as we enter into worship. Let us rejoice in our proclamation of resurrection that we do during the Easter season. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. God has broken the chains of death forever. Alleluia. Yes, let our praises ring. Alleluia. God has broken the chains of death forever. Alleluia. Let our praises ring. Alleluia. We do rejoice that Christ is resurrection, re resurrected. <laughs> and so now we confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are greeted by the Lord. So Jesus Christ, ah, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of hope, we do not look for Jesus among the dead. Jesus is alive and is the Lord of life. Teach our hearts and our minds to trust the risen life we share with Christ. Help us to grow toward the fullness of life We pray all of this and much more through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. So, uh, I wanted to share a couple of comments about our gospel lesson again before we, uh, before the gospel is shared today and before the sermon. It's just a little time of teaching that lets the sermon um, speak to a particular thing instead of having to teach all about the gospel. So uh, because we aren't able to be together in Bible study to do some of this discussion, Bible study, I like to include a little bit of it before the gospel lesson. So the first thing I want to say about this particular story today is that it was used during uh, my ordination service. So that happened in December of 2016. And so um, this particular story is very special to me. Uh, it was also a story that was used when AJ's grandpa uh, died and at his funeral. And so it um, reminds me of two really important events in my life. Um, and the, um, like remembering AJ's grandpa, who was a very kind and caring person. He walked alongside people as we see Jesus doing in today's story, he joined in and didn't take over. He just joined in and walked with the people um, in their struggles and their suffering and in their confusion. So today's lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, and for much of the last six months, we've been studying the Gospel of Mark. And then last week, we looked at a story from the Gospel of John. And each Gospel is unique and tells the same story of Jesus in different ways. And so often in Luke, they use roads. Roads are woven into the narrative. And they're part of the journey that people go on and go through in their faith. So this is a little tidbit to notice about Luke when we're looking at that gospel. And then a reminder that this story happens on the same day as the women discover the tomb is empty. And so it's not two or three weeks later, it's the same day. So for us, it's a little weird because Easter was a couple of weeks ago, and we're still telling the story of um, what happened on the day 
of discovering the empty food. So to, the other thing uh, about today's lesson is they're on the road, they're going to Emmaus. And Emmaus is about a seven mile walk from Jerusalem. So these two disciples are walking and talking and trying to sort out all of these events. And they have quite a journey. Um, it takes me about uh, an hour to walk maybe four miles. So, and that's going, you know, kind of fast. So it's, you know, they're, they're walking for a while and trying to understand what is happening. It's very confusing. And they had hoped, they had hoped that Jesus would restore Israel, that they, that Israel then would um, reject Roman oppression and that Israel would be its own country again. We had all of these hopes for what Jesus would do. So they're grieving because Jesus died, and they're grieving because their hopes for what Jesus would do have gone away. They weren't realized. And these two disciples, as they're walking to Emmaus, Jesus joins them, and they are unable to recognize Jesus. They're unable to recognize him. And so I wonder if this happens to us. I wonder if Jesus joins us, walks with us, perhaps is in conversation with us, and we cannot recognize that Jesus is there. I wonder if this happens. I want you to just notice that this week. You, where is Jesus showing up? Where, how is Jesus walking with you? In conversation with you? Asking you questions. And don't look for Jesus in big, amazing, awesome events. But instead, look for Jesus in normal, ordinary, kind of boring things. Like going for a walk. Like sitting at your table and eating a meal. Because Jesus shows up. Jesus joins us in those events. And then Jesus feeds us, nourishes us. Jesus challenges us. And then really, Jesus leaves. The Holy Spirit stays with us, and Jesus leaves. Leaves or leaves, sorry. Leaves, leaves, leaves. The Holy Spirit stays with us, but Jesus leaves. So now I ask Dorothy to um, share the gospel lesson with us. Before I share the gospel, again, this is from Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Now on that same day, the two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus. It was about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all the things they had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him.
And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk? And they stood still and looked sad. And then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him and said, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place these days? And he asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And now our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all of this, it's now the third day since these things took place. And then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow to heart to believe all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer all these things and then enter into glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all of the things about himself in the scriptures. As they came near to the village where they were going, Jesus walked ahead of them as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening. And the day is now nearly over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. When he was at the table, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized Jesus, and he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were our hearts not burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the 11 of their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Word of the Lord. I imagine recently you've probably gone out to maybe the post office or a pharmacy or even a grocery store. And you've seen the plastic shields that the cashiers have up due to the coronavirus. I imagine that probably feels very distancing. It might feel a little bit awkward, probably. I know it has for me. One pastor wrote an article about the things that he had witnessed and heard in a hospital and how he was moved by these events. He had witnessed a family getting angry with the hospital staff because they weren't allowed to visit their loved one who had the coronavirus. And so they were feeling distant from their loved one. Another account, a relative said, 
I know that I can't be there, but this distancing is so challenging for me. Another patient was nearing the end of their life. And so the family was called together to say goodbye, but unfortunately they couldn't because of coronavirus distancing. And so again, they were kept distant. A chaplain reported visiting patients and praying with them and said that many of the patients cry because they're feeling so isolated and alone. And this time is so difficult. We're feeling a number of emotions, sad, grief, impatience, depression, loneliness. And these emotions are similar to what we encounter in our Bible story this morning. Of the two men walking to Emmaus, we know that they were experiencing a tumult of emotions because of the recent events that had transpired. And even worse, this morning, it was discovered that Jesus's body was missing. I can't imagine how they felt about that. And so as they walked and talked, Jesus appears to them and has a conversation with them. And they expressed their grief and hurt and fear. But they didn't recognize Jesus. They just assumed they were talking to a stranger. And it's interesting because Jesus allowed them to express what they were feeling. He didn't try to stop them by saying, hey, look, it's me. I'm alive. He just listened. He walked with them and let them have their feelings. When they arrived at Emmaus, they asked this visitor to stay for a meal. And it was when he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it that they recognized him. And once they recognized him, he disappeared. They were so excited by this that they went back to Jerusalem where they had just come from to share the news with the other disciples. So what is the point of all of this? Jesus is present for you. Remember as the two men expressed their feelings, Jesus was there with them, present, listening. Jesus is similarly with us. He hasn't abandoned us. Just as he was with the two disciples on the road, so is he with us today. And he listened to them. just as he listens to us. And so maybe in this pandemic, you're feeling sad or hurt. Maybe you're grieving. Maybe you're experiencing depression. You can express those feelings to God. They're important to Jesus. Just like children's emotions are important to their parents. So our emotions are important to Jesus. He's here to listen to us and to walk with us through them. Jesus cares and loves you so very much. So I want to tell you a story. And it's a story that you might have heard before, but I think it's a good reminder. This is a story of an elderly man who was dying of cancer. The 
The man's daughter asked the local priest to come and pray with her father. He was bedridden. And when the priest arrived, he found the man lying in his bed. The man asked the priest to shut the door. And there was an empty chair next to his bed. And the man said, I've never told anybody this before, not even my daughter. I've never known how to pray my entire life, but my best friend taught me. And the chaplain was really moved by this story of having an empty chair next to him so that he could talk to Jesus. So after he left, sometime later, the, doc the daughter called and informed that her father had passed. The daughter said, there's something sort of strange though in my father's passing. He's still in his bed, but he's leaning over and his head is on the chair next to the bed. The priest, knowing the story, said he laid his head on Jesus' lap. Because Jesus was present for the man, just as Jesus is present for you here today. Jesus listens. We are grateful for Jesus, for being here with us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Amen. Now, as we pray for the other, for others, we pray for those for compassion for those who are devastated at this time, for those who have lost their jobs, for the business owner whose business is lost, the, for the people who have no home in which to stay at home in. For those in leadership whose hearts are breaking over the suffering of the people in their care. For those for whom home is neither a peaceful nor a safe place. For those who are angry and desperate to reopen our economy despite the risks. For those who are weary of fighting for the most vulnerable. For those who are the most vulnerable and are weary of bearing the load. For those who are dying alone. for those whose hearts ache with loneliness. For those who are shut off from anyone who might hold them while they are afraid. For those whose suffering God alone can see. God, make us more kind, more open-hearted, more tender with everyone we meet today and every day. Amen. Peace from the Lord be with you all.
I'm also with you. Now is the time to share the peace with others. This time when we're together in worship at Bread of Life, that we stand up and we walk around and we greet one another with the peace that God gives to us. So right now we can't do it that way. So instead I invite you to, again, pick up your phone, send a text message, or maybe send an email. Grab your directory, find someone's phone number, give them a call and chat with them. Share the peace of God with one another at this time. My friends, God takes care of us in many different ways. And one of the ways that God takes care of us is when we bring our offerings, when we bring what we have to God. And so at this time, Bread of Life invites you to put your worship into action, to make your faith an action because God's work in the world is done through us, done through our hands, through our feet, through the words that we share with one another. God's work is done through our relationships with one another and when we put our faith into action, when we do something, and sharing our money is a part of our worship. It's not easy. And at this time, it feels a little risky, maybe kind of dangerous, because the economy is all sorts of crazy. Everything has slowed way down. But we continue to worship. We continue to Recognize that God is active in our lives and in our world. We are resisting the temptations to say we should just give up and quit. Because in truth, we are learning even more now to depend on God. And as we live stream our worship or we share our worship online here at Bread of Life, we are connecting to a wider group of people than we have connected with for a very long time. God is working through us in this time of unknowns because we can share this worship experience with friends far and near with people we've lost touch with over time, with people we just are meeting now. We can share the good news of God's love with deaf people and their families. And so to do that, Bread of Life invites your offerings. Prepare your offerings to send them to Bread of Life as an act of worship and an act of trust. Because together with God, we can do impossible things. Lift our hearts to you, like you lifted Jesus from the grave. Through Jesus, bring everything from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, and from death to life. We thank you. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught.
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So as we are not, we are gathered in worship together by God. We are also sent from worship by God. God sends us out with a blessing. So receive this blessing. Darkness has become light. Sorrow has given way to joy and to hope. As you have been transformed by the power of the cross, go forth into the world and bear witness to the good news that you have received this day. We go in the name of the Creator and of the Savior and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Say it with me. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are Christ's body. Christ raised up the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Say it with me. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs>